All right, this is another video. I'm restarting the process of the remanufacturing of these two, well, the repair. There is no remanufacturing of these controllers. But this is the JTEC controller. I'm gonna start from beginning to end on this one so you guys can see the whole process of the actual repairs also and how to test. Uh, first, obviously, you remove the cover. Four screws in the top. Um, very common for these screws to break like this. Nothing to worry about. Basically all these screws do is hold the plate to the front of this because obviously when you bolt it to the vehicle the bolts go right through the front cover also. So that's what you want to do first. Remove the plate. If you're doing multiple units uh, it's a good idea to whatever the part number is to engrave it into the side so you don't mess up or if you use software like mine it tells you what the part number is when you plug it in anyways so there we go remove the cover what you want to do is clean it um, if you're going to be doing a lot of these at the same time I know it sounds crazy but when I was doing multiple units we actually had dishwasher we put them in there and and it cleaned them very well and uh, that's why you can get all the oil off in that because the next process obviously is putting it in you got to heat it up to actually get this board out of this unit itself and that's where the tough part comes in first thing you want to do I always use an exacto knife um, what you need to do is to separate this gel this outside gel from the aluminum casing as best you can um, it just helps if you don't do this it makes it so much tougher to get this board out of here after you get it heated up anyways so what you want to do is make sure you don't put the knife in at any other angle you want it directly against the aluminum you want to go down all the way to where the, it stops and just cut and loosen this stuff up right from the side of the, the case do it like three or four times until you start feeling the blade touch the bottom. <clears throat> uh, you can use a utility knife. It's just this is smaller and it kind of gets in here a little easier. It's not as much chance of you going in and damaging the board. So do this a few times on each one. <clears throat> you know, try and do a good job. I mean, if you take pride in your work, you don't want it all this stuff all hacked up and looking nasty. So, do this on each side. <clears throat> if you use a new blade each time, it, it really slices through this stuff pretty easily. Like I said in the other videos, if you watched them, do not go and cut a big ass hole in the bottom of these boards. You're basically destroying the part and it's never going to last again. So definitely do not do that. That is just a, a terrible idea. This case is made to be a, a heat sink. That's why they built it this way. <clears throat> and I'll show you once we get it open. The common part on this that heats up is the memory and that block right there rests directly on top of the memory. So obviously that's what this whole case does. It turns it to a heat sink to keep that part cooled down to where it doesn't fail. These blocks here go down and touch on the driver, the injector drivers, and that's what those are for. So I don't know who came up with the idea of that before, but do not cut a hole in this case. You're destroying the part. You might make it work for a while, but it's not going to last. You're gonna f that EEPROM is going to fail again. <clears throat> All right. Next what you want to do, these screws right here, these go down, this is a metal tab here. What that tab does is another heat sink, goes down and touches on the alternator driver and the coil driver. 
and it's just another attempt at keeping this thing cool, cool to where it does not damage these components. They don't overheat and fail. These screws go down and hold it, and the heat actually supposedly transfers through the screws to the case. So next thing we need to do is remove these three screws. Just push right through the gel on these and let them pull out. So the next process, most important portion part of this, is in order to get this stuff to where it's any way pliable. If you try and take it out now, you it's impossible. You're going to destroy it, or you're just going to break the plug up into pieces and, and destroy the part. So don't go in and try and dig this out. The, your friend is heat. You want to put this thing in an oven or convection oven. Obviously, you want to do it outside. I don't do these for a living anymore, nothing for years now. So I'm going to wrap this thing in aluminum foil and put it in the oven. Most important is wait for your wife to leave and then do it. And don't tell her you did it. So that's why the biggest thing you want to do is get this thing clean. Get all the oil off of it. I mean, just scrub it. Scrub it down, make sure there's no oil left on it. So that's most important. Like I say, I put a little bit of foil over just to make sure there's no popping or anything. Another important thing, do not go above 250 degrees. You go above that, you're going to actually heat this up enough where you're going to start getting these components that are going to desolder themselves. So it's just going to cause you more issues. So 250 degrees, I mean, the longer you leave it in there, the better it's going to be. It's going to come out so much easier. When you go to pull it out, it's not going to have all this stuff stuck to it still. So 250 degrees, think about you know 20 to 30 minutes, get it good and heat soaked into it. Then you pull it out and that's where we're gonna go to the next step. So give me a few minutes here, I'm gonna get this thing ready and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes after we heat this up. You touch an aluminum and you just pry up on it. Say when this stuff is pliable like this and hot, it really comes out of here extremely easy. I mean, it it just basically almost falls not falls out. You have to put a little bit of weight and force on it, but it comes out pretty simple. And like I was telling you before, the heat sink of this case, you can see where they they were trying to keep things cooled in this in this computer itself. And the biggest thing they're trying to keep cool was the memory, which is the, the flash EEPROM that's in this thing. Their flash memory. Don't say EEPROM. It's not EEPROM. Flash memory that's in this. And that's right there. We're going to get to that later. And the other thing is the injector drivers are on the back here. And let's see what else they're trying to... And that looks like it on this one. Um, there's different versions of this board. So they're, some of the components are flipped around different areas on it. So, But that's how you get it out of the aluminum case. Heat is your best friend like say in between 250 280 at the most I would go on it uh, nothing above 300 because you're gonna start desoldering components on here and that's definitely not good so that's this video first one on how to get these goofy things out of these cases the next one we're gonna cut this gel out and I'll show you a good way of getting it clean and how to get down to a clean surface to where you can actually work and repair uh, the failures on these so thanks for watching and see you in the next video.